Hello there, welcome to update on the situation in Iceland. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for being here with me today and I hope I can provide a little update on the data that we have over the last week or so going on in Iceland and then I've got a little spin on things in a cartoon I'll share with you at the end. I want to apologize for being absent the last couple days. I was um, down in Las Vegas for advanced canyoneering class over the weekend uh, and then I was down in Southern California putting together some some more field-based videos out in the desert in that region. So apologize for the absence over the last few days, but largely there hasn't been a whole lot of development in Iceland, and, and yet we still uh, it still points towards something happening moving forward. So we're definitely looking at some sort of event that will transpire, wh whether that's an eruptive event or a magma intrusion um, that ends at some point. Uh, those are the the variables that we're kind of looking at right now so um, but the overall idea is that we have uplift of the area around the power plant that is the data that we're using to infer the magma intrusion there doesn't seem to be any more magma moving into the dike to the east that caused uh, all the chaos around November 10th about a month ago uh, so an eruption is, is still very much possible so let's look at the data for today and let me share with you what we see going on. So here's our earthquake data over the last 24 hours. And you can see it's mostly smaller quakes. Uh, quakes above two don't show up at all. Uh, above one, we get some there. And largely, quakes more or less constrained to the area where the dike is, this intrusion of magma that occurred earlier about a month ago. I have a little explanation for I think what might be going on there, but let's just stick with the data for now, what we know. So there's there's the earthquake data over the last uh, 24 hours or so. Um, and earthquake overall seismic activities decreased quite a bit over what we've seen previously. So it's similar to the last, I'd say, two weeks or so. Um, more or less so it's definitely dropped down a little bit if we go to the GPS data uh, and of course here we want to especially look at uh, the one around Svartsengi the power plant so if we make that bigger and then let's move this around so so you folks can see it um, let's see so here's our uplift plot here let me put this a little higher up there we go and so this is for uh, the Svartsengi GPS station. And this again runs through uh, through October, excuse me, September. Here's October at the bottom, November. And then the last little bit along the right side of the graph is what we have so far in December. This is about a 90 day or so graph. So things very stable. If you remember, then uplift uh, indicating magma intrusion in the subsurface. And that continued till about November 10th when the magma moved away from this area under the power plant and shifted and, and began filling and creating a, a dike to the east. Uh, and so we see a, a rapid drop in, the, in terms of uplift. So instead of the, the land rising, it actually dropped quite a bit. And then since that time, it's been steadily rising. And of course, what we're mainly concerned about is this, this trend uh, continuing. So even the last data point here around December 6 or so, uh, we can see there's an upward trend in that data. It does look a little less steep. Uh, you can see it's starting to roll over a little bit. Um, but what's really interesting here is it's nearly, it's about 50 or so millimeters, about five centimeters away from the critical threshold it reached around November 10th. So remember that we had uplift until that time. Uh, and so if we if we interpret this data, what this might mean is that the system became overpressurized when it got to about this point here, about 10 centimeters. Uh, and so that's what caused the magma to find the easiest path out. And so it, it, it intruded through some fracture systems or some other pore spaces um, off to the east and began filling that dike there. And so what's interesting is to see, well, what if this trend continues, what will happen as we get a little bit closer to this um, 100 millimeter line right here we're at about 50 right now so about five more centimeters of uplift if this trend continues and that could take another could take another week or two to get there but if the trend continues uh, what will it do will that mean that there's an eruption will the magma 
continue to rise and maybe exceed this point so continue to cause uplift beneath the power plant or will it take off maybe in some other direction in terms of the, the magma movement but nonetheless i think this is telling because it it indicates that the system this isn't sustainable you can't just keep uh, causing the ground to rise at this rate indefinitely something's going to have to change um, if the magma keeps pushing into the subsurface at the rate that it, it has been so uh, so that data point you can see it on other uh, some of the other ones as well but it, i think it's most telling um, at the svart singi one so if you look at the eldvorp one uh, you see the similar relationship right here whoops let me make that bigger there you go you see the same relationship at other stations but the one right under the power plant is probably the most dramatic in terms of rate of uplift because it's sitting right above where that magma intrusion is currently so so it's wait and see uh, a little bit longer um, you know we'll have to see how this goes moving forward let's look at the latest update from the Met office um, and this is from yesterday this I guess yeah yesterday the six more magma propagation likely and again a bit of a, a language interpretation here but let's see if we can decipher this as best we can likelihood of a volcanic eruption over the intrusion has significantly decreased so what they're saying there is the the dike that northeast southwest trending dike that goes right through a uh, Grindavik that the the likelihood of an eruption there has decreased so not uh, an eruption in general just in that location uh, latest model suggests that the inflow to the dike has likely ceased so they're saying hey we don't see any more evidence that magma is moving into that dike system um, and so all the magma is accumulating magma accumulation continues beneath Fartsengi so it's underneath the power plant so magma is still coming up it's just not moving into that dike and in a second here I'll get to my little cross section which might make a lot more sense than all the the words and the talking we're doing right now um, okay the ongoing activity which began in October is not over not yet over and a new chapter may have begun with an increased chance of a new magma propagation and subsequently increased likelihood of an eruption so even though it does it looks like not much is happening and you know if you're a casual observer you're kind of getting bored with this you know just slow uplift scenario that we've had play out the last several weeks um, it does look like we're, we're we're moving towards some sort of culminating event whether that's in and most likely it would be an eruption at some point the big the big question is when and where of course um, continuing with the update as previously mentioned the dike beneath Grindavik was fed by magma accumulating beneath Svartsengi it's likely this sequence of events will repeat so yeah when looking at the overall pattern with repeated magma accumulation it can be estimated that the next magma propagation from Svartsengi might be on a smaller scale than the one that formed on November 10th a magma propagation could persist for several hours or days with an increased risk due to seismic activity and deformation during that period so what they're saying is we we, we didn't have the eruption early on and now we're kind of back to where we began in late October with uplift beneath the power plant region um, and you know trying to figure out where the magma is going to go next um, let's see anything else in here that's worth noting um, yeah following a magma propagation the likelihood of an eruption increases uh, it's most likely the magma will propagate from Svartsengi into the previous form dike on November 10th making it the most likely area for an eruption so they think that if it's going to erupt it's going to be along that dike but right now they also they're also saying that that dike it does not have any more magma moving through it so you'd have to get it over there and we know it can move quickly we saw that on November 10th that it took uh, a day or two for that magma to migrate to the east and occupy those old fractures and form that magma dike uh, it's not possible to estimate when the next magma propagation will occur uncertainty is considerable uh, it could happen in the next few days or possibly after several months yeah so it's it's still a waiting game and so with that let me let me take you to my I drew another silly cartoon um, but hopefully this will be somewhat helpful uh, let me see where did I put that cartoon at uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. let's see it's in here somewhere let me open this up and this will hopefully help you um, understand at least my interpretation so now we've we're, we're closing the chapter on the the uh, data what we know for sure and now we're hopefully not going into fantasy land hopefully this is 
solid professional opinion mode, but still just a possible possibility for sure. So what we have here is just um, a diagram I put together showing the magma, and this is a cross section. Let me let me get you back to this point and orient you a little bit. I drew a cross section line um, right about here, so uh, through or very close to the power plant and the Blue Lagoon. So to give you some scale, here's a, a set of craters over here, another set of craters from prior eruption here. And this red straight line is more or less my line of cross section. So it cuts through both of these and it's just south of the power plant and cuts across the road there. Um, so what might be going on is this is the area under the power plant that's being uplifted. So you can see the little black arrows here. We know that uh, around November 10th, that's when the magma that was highly pressurized beneath this region took off and, and pushed through existing fractures and formed this vertical or near vertical dike over here to the east uh, near the Sundanukur crater row from a pre prior eruption. But since that time, that, that magma, of course, didn't make it to the surface. We have estimates that it got as close as half a kilometer to the surface, um, but it didn't quite make it. And since that time, that magma has been cooling and crystallizing slowly. And there's no evidence based on the Met Office data that any more magma has moved through this system. We don't know exactly how thick it is. I've kind of drawn it kind of thin there. There may be a little constriction in the system. Remember, the, this magma has got to move through pre-existing fractures in the rock. So it's not like there's these huge cavities in the subsurface. Now, sometimes there might be a lava tube or there could be something that it exploits, but for the most part, it's got to push its way through whatever fractures are there. And so a lot of the earthquakes we're seeing over the last two weeks in this area might be mainly related to not magma pushing on the surrounding rocks, but as that magma cools and crystallizes, it contracts and that exerts stresses on the rock that causes um, these small earthquakes we might be seeing. So we've completely, so in bringing that magma into these rocks, you change the stress conditions. Uh, earthquakes should be expected there, even if the magma is no longer flowing in there. So all my little cute little X's in there are just hypothetical earthquakes, but that kind of matches the, the data that we're seeing, that this is the area where the earthquakes are occurring. Now we're not seeing a lot of earthquakes here and uh, I guess that would mainly mean that the the uplift is it's it's slow, um, and that these rocks are heated enough that maybe they behave a little bit more um, ductily or, or they're a little bit more elastic. They're they're basically deforming and uplifting without breaking, and that would explain the lack of seismicity right underneath the power plant. Um, but we still have that inflow because we have the GPS measurements showing that the land's rising here, and the distance from the power plant over here is about two and two and a half kilometers. This is not to scale. The distance from the power plant over to this row of craters is about twice that. It's about five kilometers. So I apologize for not drawing this to scale. It was just kind of a quick, quick and dirty little cartoon. Um, and then what I've drawn on both of these old crater rows, and really these exist throughout the subsurface here, all these little lines I've drawn here are just fractures. Remember that when we get lava flows when we have the volcanic system like we do in Iceland we have lava flows that get stacked on top of each other so that creates fractures or discontinuities between stacked lava flows you might have a, a pillow lava at the bottom or a rubbly zone more dense areas we've talked before about the nature of this rock basalt it varies quite a bit in terms of its density it also varies a lot in terms of its degree of fracturing and porosity and permeability. And then I've drawn some vertical ones in here, which might be related to either cooling of the of the magma or the lava. So that could create vertical fractures like you see with columnar joints. You could also get some of these vertical fractures in response to older magma injections into that area. And so who knows exactly how the fractures run through this entire subsurface. And that's really the key to understanding where the magma is going to go if it's going to go any anywhere is maybe the area beneath the power plant is highly fractured and so we might have this is actually the eruptive path if we do get to an eruption would be here which would be bad news because we have the power plant in the blue lagoon there um, but it's possible that that's the site of the eruption uh, does it move to the west to the Elvort craters over here and into what we know is already a pre-existing set of fractures because there was a prior eruption there 
at some point or does it move back to the east and inject inject magma probably not into this same pathway but maybe a parallel pathway and exploit some other fracture system over in this area um, and so it's it's anyone's guess as to which way it goes what we would look for hopefully is some earthquake or GPS data to indicate which way it's going to go if we start seeing uh, inflation over here along with increased earthquake activity that could be a good sign that the magma is moving to the east it could also move to the west um, or it could move uh, upwards towards the power plant and there's probably other scenarios as well and this of course is just one little slice uh, east to west through the whole thing so um, but something to think about something to consider um, just one little spin on the whole thing and, and we'll just kind of see after have to see how it plays out as we head into the holidays um, I did hear from kind of to round this up I did just get a message a bit ago from uh, Amanda Jo who's who lives in Grindavik and is now in a apartment somewhere else uh, and asked her about things in the town she says that um, at her house they don't have cold water or sewage but they're working to fix it uh, for the most part water sewage electricity and heat are at most of the houses but there's a few houses like hers that don't have cold water and sewage uh, some houses have been fully banned to enter because they're structurally confirmed as unsafe so the the government reserves that right to you know condemn property that's uh, deemed unfit for habitation um, some businesses are working in the area but have limited hours of operation and when she spoke to a friend in the fire department she learned that there's sinkholes more sinkholes are popping up around town that are being reported most of them are pretty small but the larger ones are the ones that they're videotaping and that's going out into the media so probably more sinkholes and collapse features than what you're seeing through the media um, but a lot of those are actually pretty small so anyway um, hopefully that's helpful of course I'll update you as things develop um, I've got a lot of questions that have come in so maybe tomorrow if there's no significant news we can do another question and answer and then also want to put on your radar that I'm looking to do a live stream uh, next Wednesday December 13th um, I'm not sure what time yet I got to figure out a good time because we've got people in all different parts of the globe so I'm trying to figure out a time that'll be a sweet spot and work well for the most people I don't want the people in Europe to have to stay up till 2 a.m. Uh, but if I do it too early in the states then people might not be at home remember that if you miss it you can always catch it uh, as a recording but I will post a announcement for that sometime by the by the end of this weekend at the latest so look for that if you're interested so uh, thanks as always to everyone that's been joining me for these it's been fun for me to just keep tabs on what's happening in Iceland of course we always want to consider those people that have been displaced first uh, and hope that there's some sort of resolution to the situation that happens soon um, in a lot of respects just having the eruption sooner rather than later would probably be ideal from from a lot of perspectives in the sense that you just you, you have a known a known hazard now you know where the lava went where it erupted you can kind of start to take proactive measures but right now we're in this very nebulous wait and see scenario of trying to figure out uh, where this thing's going to erupt and when um, it, it could take it could take weeks it could spill well into uh, 2024 into the next year before we see any sort of resolution here so the unfortunate thing is it's happening very close to this town and the power plant and that's why it's such a news item and so many people are tuning in if this was happening in the middle of Iceland up in the mountains um, there'd be very little attention given to it so but anyway thanks again for joining me appreciate your support hope you're doing well uh, for the holidays and uh, we'll see you next time take care